The Windows IoT team is hard at work listening to customers and bringing tons of goodness into their products. James Collins from the Windows IoT team is here today on the IoT show to tell us all about the roadmap and the latest updates. Hi everyone, you just joined the IoT show and uh, this is Olivier, your host. Today we're going to give you an update on Windows for IoT and I have James Collis from the Windows IoT team. James, thanks for joining the show today. Thank you very much, Olivier. I'm super excited to be here and I'm here to represent Windows 10 IoT and uh, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so tell me, James, uh, a little bit, uh, a little word about yourself. You know, who are you? What is your role at Microsoft, uh, and what is your team doing in general? Right. Uh, so uh, I'm James Colas. I'm a principal program manager lead on the Windows IoT team, and so uh, I lead a team of folks over here uh, working to make Windows uh, for IoT be the best possible thing it can be for our IoT customers. Awesome. I love Windows IoT. It's a, it's a great OS for embedded devices. We'll talk a bit more about the details and what's new, but before that, a little reminder about what is Windows IoT for our audience. So, you know, we have a lot of customers out there using Windows for IoT in industrial settings and medical settings for, for signage. And the feedback that we really hear from them is that they choose Windows for kind of the three things that I'm showing here on the screen. You know, they find that it's, they can build smart devices. We have a really extensive set of technology stacks, media stacks, AI and ML stacks, all built into Windows. They appreciate having that. They appreciate that it's super secure. We have a team of security experts that keep Windows totally up to date with all the latest security research, and uh, and we support the product for 10 years. They appreciate that. And most of all, they appreciate how quickly they can get a device to market using Windows IoT because they really don't have to staff a whole OS support team. And when they build their own OS out of open source alternatives, they find that they do have to support you know quite an infrastructure to do that. So they often find that if they build it from us, they can get to market quicker and get in channel quicker, which really helps their business. And, and actually, I, I, what I like with uh, with you guys from the Windows IoT team is very often you come with samples. We have a couple of examples of actual solutions that our customers are using because it's not very well known that Windows IoT is actually out there uh, and, and that some devices that people are using on a daily basis are running Windows 10 IoT. You know, that's right. We do often take a bit of a backstage to our customers. We want our customers to have their branding be foremost and, and have their solutions be the most well-known things. Uh, so I will go into uh, just a couple real quickly. So the folks in Dover Fueling Solutions make a fuel pump with a huge screen on it here. And this is what takes advantage of the Windows kind of media capabilities. They play video on this screen. Uh, they have a camera here that will uh, see when there's someone there. And then they have a full Azure IoT solution on the back end, which monitors all of the uh, fuel flow and uh, what's going on with the temperature and everything. And they can use a lot of advanced analytics using Azure IoT to make sense of that and deliver intelligence to the station operator along with video and engagement to kind of spice up an otherwise rather boring task of filling your car. Yeah, and, and people don't even realize they're using a Windows device right there. So that's that's pretty neat. That's right. You know, we don't want to we don't want to take over the the Windows brand there in in front of the fuel because that's really Dover's brand. That's important to us. Another really interesting one is uh, Democracy Live. This is a, a voting solution, and you may not know, but a lot of the voting solutions that you use are running Windows IoT. Uh, and what these folks wanted to do is they wanted to have an off the shelf system that really any locality could go buy for a pretty reasonable price. So they partnered with Dell and Windows and. They were really focused on accessibility because a lot of folks with uh, disabilities have a hard time voting with some of these solutions. Well, Windows has got accessibility built right in, and so they were really able to get to market quickly with a voting device that's actually fairly reasonably priced um, for everyone to vote, and this uh, is something that came through really recently, so we're really proud of this. Nice. That's pretty timely, actually. Pretty timely here over here in the U.S. But uh, So can you walk us through the various versions of Windows 10 IoT? 
Absolutely. So when we think about Windows for IoT, we have kind of a, a range of offerings. Uh, on the low end, we have Windows IoT Core and the services that keep it up to date. You know, Windows IoT Enterprise is really our bread and butter product. It's a full Windows stack uh, packaged into an, an IT form factor. And then for larger installations, such as, say, an oil rig or a container ship, those folks will run server IoT and also our new SQL server for IoT. So they'll find that useful in those big environments. Awesome. I guess they can learn more about um, all of that on the on the websites for that. So we'll uh, give some links down there. So you've been telling me that you've been listening to our customers, right? And so uh, it led to having some updates to Windows uh, 10 IoT uh, that you're going to describe today. So what are the things that our customers are telling us these days about Windows 10 IoT and its actual status? Right. So, you know, uh, probably my favorite thing to do here is listen to customers, and um, we're doing it out there all the time. That's that's our kind of main key thing. And, you know, I've kind of put some of the things on the screen here. In, in IoT Core, the biggest thing that we've heard is, look, I have invested a long time in a rather large code base running the Win32 surface, and, uh, you know, I need IoT devices that are going to run all that code. Uh, and they also say that our silicon support is not quite as broad as they might like to have. You know, there's a wide range of silicon out there, and they want it to run on more. So we hear that for IoT Core. Uh, for IoT Enterprise, we always hear that, hey, we love the functionality of Windows. We don't as much love the size of Windows. So uh, can, can you get the size down? We hear a lot. And, you know, can you get the costs down of the hardware that I need in order to go to market with a solution? Those are related problems. So those are kind of the biggest things that we hear there. I see. So basically, whether uh, it's too small or not functional enough or not too small, but not functional enough, or is it too big and has all the features? So is it time to converge? <laughs> You read my mind, Olivier. Uh, oh, I read so as we look toward the future, <laughs> as we look toward the future, we think about how we can converge our offerings, just as you said, to be able to take the kind of best of both of these additions. And as we move toward IoT Enterprise of the future, we will have a release in 2021. It's a 10 year supported long term release. And our idea is to take the goodness of IoT Core and the goodness of IoT Enterprise and bring them into uh, IoT Enterprise our next edition here. And so okay, let's, look at the, let's look at the trade-offs because there's going to be trade-offs, right? What we think is that by bringing these together, we can really reduce these trade-offs. You know, I'm a big fan of and believer of trade-offs, and I think we're going to be able to bring a lot of this in one place. Um, Love it. You know, we hear about footprint a lot. I'm going to lead with footprint. And so we, we need to get the size down to a reasonable size so you can see where we're going on that. We need to run all of your existing software, so we absolutely believe we'll be able to do that. You know, we've talked a bit about on the IoT show already about how we're going to do a more Azure IoT Edge support by increasing the capabilities to run Linux. And then we're going to go down and run on IMX8 some uh, chipsets, which is a really good low-cost silicon. We'll run everything that, uh, that uh, the X64 silicon providers put out there, and we'll continue to make Windows better and better kind of leveraging what Windows is already known to be good at for update and management. So we think we can make one addition that really does bring all these together with maybe a little less trade-offs. Uh, so yep. I'm really looking forward to that one in particular. Um, the, the IT Edge one is, is pretty good as well. Let's look into more of the details of these uh, of, the, of, of, of that roadmap will, will be implemented in these various things. Let's talk a bit more about uh, one or, or two of these items that you guys are working on and why, basically, at the end of the day, uh, what are the objectives that you're uh, looking at? Great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so when I think about the roadmap of work that the team is kind of embarking on here to deliver what the customers are asking for, it kind of breaks down into the three things that I'm describing on the screen here. And let me go through that. The most important for us near term is to increase the capabilities of Windows to run Linux modules. And so that's going to allow us to run Azure IoT Edge, the full Linux solution of that, and uh, to make available all of the 
kind of third party modules that are in the marketplace for Azure IoT Edge, those typically are, are going to be Linux modules and we want to run those on Windows along with any other solutions that folks are running in Linux. So we continue to bring Linux and Windows more together and I think that's really going to benefit our Azure IoT Edge solutions there. Again, Terry Warwick uh, was on your show, Olivier, and uh, I believe recorded an episode to kind of go into much more detail on that one. Definitely. That's definitely one you won't want to, you won't want to miss. Sure. Exactly. Uh, and a, again, uh, we, we need to bring the bomb cost the, uh, down for each of these devices, so we want to be able to run on lower-cost hardware. Uh, and part of that is reducing the OS footprint. So, again, we're trying to get down to 16 gigs of storage, 2 gigs of RAM. That's really the sweet spot that we hear about from customers being an important uh, kind of footprint, that they're willing to trade off and have the functionality of Windows at, at that footprint level. And then we do have some more silicon with the uh, IMX8 family from NXP that is good low-cost, low-power silicon, which is really appropriate for the IoT context. Those are the big ones. Of course, it wouldn't be Windows without operational controls. That's really one of the reasons people choose Windows as well. So we do continue to improve how someone can manage, update, and control their Windows devices as well. Awesome. Well, these are all uh, great, and, and definitely, as you were just mentioning, things that customers are expecting from Windows that update. The the lower bomb cost and, and footprint size, I think, will be super welcome by the audience. Uh, I hear there is a new board in town these days that supports uh, Windows 10 IoT. Can you share some details about that one? Absolutely. So, you know, we've uh, we've partnered closely with Asus. They've uh, put out a new board uh, right here. I have I have one in my hand here, uh, and it's uh, it's about just a little bit bigger than a Raspberry Pi, and uh, and super more powerful, and not that much more expensive. Uh, it's the IMX8 PIMA. Uh, I think most people are actually going to buy it in an industrial enclosure uh, that's ready to go into one of their solutions. That would be the PE100A is the offering for that. Um, so that's got all security and, uh, and and features of Windows. It's got really strong Wi-Fi and a lot of other capabilities there. And, of course, you know, that is going to run our new IoT Enterprise long-term edition for in 2021. But actually, folks who want to get started right now can run IoT Core on it today. So it's available today, it works today, and it will continue to support the full stack of Windows IoT, again, as we move into our 2021 release. So we're actually really excited about this hardware. Awesome, James. I, I just can't wait to have this combination of IoT Core and IoT Enterprise put together in that new release in 2021. Um, James, there's a blog post that you guys have published with details about all the announcements and all the news and the updates for the roadmap, uh, and that can be found at aka.ms slash IoT show slash Windows IoT update. James, thanks a lot for joining us on the show today. Thank you, Libby. It's always a pleasure to chat and always a pleasure to reach out to your fans. So thank you so much for having me. Thanks, everyone, for joining. James, see you soon. Everyone, don't forget to subscribe and uh, see you soon for another IoT Show episode. Bye.